so uh, you know atp is one of the nucleotide mm -hmm. uh, it comes like there are four ntps uh, for dna and uh, for rna we have also four for dna we call them dntps and for rna they are just called ntps okay so atp is one of them and atp has one major role that it acts as energy currency of the body is so ntp example, like uh, what is it ntps adenosine triphosphate oh okay 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 so uh, this adenosine triphosphate uh, it's called adenosine because uh, atp is a nucleotide you know that mm -hmm. yeah okay and uh, nucleotides are monomers for nucleic acids right yeah so now uh, when see what is a nucleotide composed of first of all a nucleotide has uh, the monomers the, the uh, mononucleo no not mono oh, yeah um, it will have a sugar okay so yeah ribo sugar in case of dna mm. and then deoxy for dna a phosphate group and there is one base over here now if the name of the base is adenine then this is adenosine triphosphate uh, so what does adenosine mean adenosine adenosine means adenine plus sugar mm -hmm. okay uh, okay adenine plus sugar means adenosine and since it has three phosphates so that's why we call it adenosine triphosphate mm -hmm. okay so now the uh, energy cycle which you was showing me see what happens there are a lot of reactions which are unfavorable you know uh, for example yeah. uh, like uh, if x has to convert to y so uh, assume that this x is glucose there is one reaction called called glucose to glucose 6 phosphate in mm -hmm. this reaction, uh, this reaction is unfavorable that means it cannot take place on its own or it may time a lot of it will require a lot of effort if it is going to convert on its own so then what we do is uh, atp acts as an energy source as well as it acts as a uh, phosphate group donor mm -hmm. okay. so for uh, now first thing how it is acting as an energy source now what happens when this atp this atp is broken into adp this is adp no till this cuz it donates it will, this bond will break you know this bond yeah yeah oh, okay when this bond is broken bond energy is released mhm mm they said the energy isn't really released cuz the bond is just cuz like the following things after the bond is broken like the the subsequent um processes after the bond is broken is where the energy is uh, being produced yeah, or released that, yeah yeah that's what i am telling you here no see Uh, you are talking about coupling yeah 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 see so that's what no the energy is released and as soon as it is released it is utilized by such reactions ah okay okay got it so what we do is we usually couple energy releasing reactions with energy requiring reactions so this is the energy requiring reaction we will couple this reaction with this reaction so that means when atp converts to adp adenosine diphosphate the energy which is released that energy is required by it is utilized by this reaction which is an endergonic reaction this reaction this endergonic mm -hmm. reaction so that it can drive forward mhm mm and one added advantage is that in this reaction atp is also acting as a phosphate group donor but this is not mandatory okay okay there may be some reactions where simply atp is converting to a am uh, adp plus pi so that means only the bond is being broken so that it can release energy so that the non spontaneous reaction or you call it uh, endergonic reaction they can move forward okay <clears throat> is it clear i'm still kind of confused on how the ender uh, endergonic reaction has to do with the atp i'm still kind of confused on that okay so see what happens uh you assume that this is substrate substrate here is glucose mhm mm now glucose has to convert to g 
glucose 6 phosphate that is product of this reaction okay so for conversion of glucose to glucose 6 phosphate it has to travel this much from here to here to here uphill uh, you know uh, climb this hill and then come down and then mm -hmm. convert to phosphate which is a very uh, difficult task okay <clears throat> this is called the activation energy barrier now there there is mm -hmm. the activation energy barrier which is playing part here and is yeah delaying the process mm -hmm. we have a, we have a catalyst which is called hexokinase the enzyme <coughs> enzyme the enzyme this enzyme it reduces lowers it right yeah it will lower down the activation energy barrier so this mm -hmm. is the energy barrier ea we call it ea activation yeah. energy it will lower down the barrier and that means it will help the glucose molecule uh, to take a shortcut in presence mm. of enzyme okay yeah. so in presence of enzyme this glucose will convert to glucose 6 phosphate very quickly now what does this uh, enzyme do this enzyme is called this enzyme here is just acting as a source for conversion of glucose to glucose 6 phosphate enzymes can't act alone they require coenzymes and cofactors okay okay so this is acting as a coenzyme here what atp does is it will donate its phosphate group and also will drive the reaction forward that means conversion of glucose to glucose 6 phosphate is a very difficult reaction is a non spontaneous reaction is energy requiring reaction since it is energy mm -hmm. reaction so we are giving energy atp is energy yeah okay so you assume that this is currency of the cell its energy is the, is the currency of the cell we are spending okay. money inside the body in the form of atp just like you spend there in in dollars right okay. so now whenever you are investing in a reaction that uh -huh. means reaction is a uh, important reaction right now we are so the atp kind of, uh like goes in the forward direction so it kind of powers the does it power the enzyme to move forward and lower the activation energy like that or yeah 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 okay in, you can just imagine that without Uh, atp and such coenzymes and cofactors there are few cofactors also which will be required like yeah like um, uh, zinc cobalt uh, magnesium magnesium 